I'd like to share with you a little bit about my exhibit, Stitching Around, at the Cultural Arts Center at Glen Allen. My name is Kalia Calhoun. I'm a fiber artist. I create with needle and thread. Today, I'm going to show you two sections. One is my two-dimensional and the other is three-dimensional. With the two-dimensional we have on the wall, these um, pieces are an outgrowth of um, making art quilts for many years, so they've become more three-dimensional. And on this side we have tamari. Represented in the glass cabinets are uh, pieces that range anywhere from traditional in style to much more contemporary interpretations. There's basically three stages to making a tamari to get to this finished um, final product. The first stage requires making the ball, which is the base on which the decorative stitching um, is placed. To make the ball, each tamari maker has a different technique. Um, I start with a core that is actually a bell and a ball. Um, other people use different materials on the inside. It's purely um, personal taste and what materials are available. For this one, um, I start with the ball and the next stage is going to be um, wrapping that ball in some um, scrap fabric. Here it's just um, some batting. And then to give it some bulk, I usually use um, stuffing like you would use for um, stuffed animal. The next stage is just wrapping it in um, yarn, heavyweight yarn, then lightweight yarn, and then the last stage is many, many layers of thread. All right, the next stage of making tamari ball is actually measuring and marking the surface so that we can have um, the surface divided up to know where to put our stitching. So, um, for actually measuring the ball, it's relative measurement. It is not a measuring stick or a tape measure that actually has numbers on it. It is a blank piece of paper. And this paper is used to find the circumference and divide that up in order to be able to find where a North Pole, a South Pole, and an Equator is. So the next stage would be, after um, making those divisions, is to place pins uh, to know exactly where the lines are going to go. The paper goes around and then pins are at the um, division marks. In this case, it is divided eight, um, into eight equal segments so that um, when thread is stitched from the North Pole to the South Pole um, and then around the Equator, it is um, what's called a simple division. This is um, called an S8. And after the threads are placed, then they're tacked down with a fine thread to hold them in place so they don't shift while stitching the decorative design. For tamari that have a geometric design, there's basically three divisions of the ball surface. Um, the first one is a simple division, like I showed you before, where you have a North Pole and a South Pole. This one does not have the equator marked. Um, the next division, and th by the way, this is an, um, what's considered an S6 because there are six segments in this one. This is called a um, C8, and if you look at it, it's more like a, um, looks more like a cube. You, if there are actually six squares, just like on a cube. So this has a North Pole, a South Pole, and an Equator, but then there's more division lines, so it's more complex. Then the third one is called a C10. And in this one, um, here again, it has a North Pole, a South Pole. You do not see an equator on this one because um, there is measuring and marking that is ends up not on the equator for a C10. So there's a bit more complex um, measuring and marking for this ball. The next stage to making a tamari is actually stitching um, the decorative pattern on the surface of the ball. This um, ball has already been uh, measured and marked, but the markings are almost invisible because I use the same color thread as the background. And this one's getting close to done. This is a similar um, division um, and design as the one I'm currently working on. The blue um, bands are similar to the purple ones on here. Um, there are basically three things to know to um, stitching a design, a basic design and that is starting a thread, ending a thread, and making a stitch, which is different than on a piece of fabric where you have a backside of a piece of fabric. So for this one, these bands are almost done. The last thing to do is to bury this thread and to finish it off, there's no knot. Instead, I'm gonna 
pop the thread up. And I'm going to work the thread back and forth. And it's just going to be friction that holds this in place. That's it. So I'll go back and forth a couple times, and then it gets clipped off, and then it's done. So the bands are completed. Now if I wanted another design on top, which I will um, demonstrate, um, just so that you can see how a tiny stitch is done, because there's no elaborate stitching. The patterns can be elaborate, but basically the stitching is a simple stitch. I'm going to first insert the thread. I usually make um, a hole, bring the needle up where it needs to go, and then I'm going to make a stitch. And usually I like to use the surface of the ball um, to um, measure off where I need to go. So I'm going to go from one point to another. I know you can't see it, but on here I can um, see where it is dividing this um, little triangle in half. And that's it. It's a tiny little stitch. So it just goes in underneath this guideline, tiny stitch, and then back up. And I will continue this all the way around until I have a little star pattern. And then this pattern can be filled in to make it a little bit more elaborate. For this particular ball, the star pattern serves two purposes. One is it gives some, um, some added interest, filling in these spaces, and the other it actually holds these bands in place. These um, needle um, pins are actually in here just to um, let me know where these um, bands need to stay. I can move them back and forth as needed. But once these, uh, this pattern is stitched in place, it will hold these bands in place and then I don't have to worry about them moving. I hope you'll come see my artwork at the Cultural Arts Center in Glen Allen.